Oracle Apex is a developer tool that enables us to create working applications on a database in Oracle and to do that very quickly. So in this video series for rapid application development, we will be using Apex 424. If you want to work along with the videos, there are scripts available that will be run in the first few videos that create tables and populate the tables with data. In this video, we're going to create some lists of values and use them in the master detail forms that we created in a previous video. So I'm going to edit my application. And this is something I might use in more than one location, more than one form or report. So I'm going to go to Shared Components and I will create the list of values. This is a little different than what we've done in the past because we want to combine information from two or more columns in the display column for the list of values. So I'm going to click Create, Create from Scratch, and I will give it a name and it'll be a dynamic list of values. And because we want to use more than one column to display in the first uh, column in the list of values, we will have to write the code. I'm going to copy paste it in and then talk about what the code is. So I've copied the code in. I'll make it a little bigger. I am taking, selecting the team name, which will be coming from the team table. Team name followed by a colon followed by the last name and a comma, followed by the first name. doesn't matter that it's lowercase or uppercase. It's not case sensitive at this point. And all three of those fields will be the display column and the return value will be the student ID. These are coming from the tables students and teams and the tables are joined on the primary key to foreign key fields. The sort will be by the display column. So it'll sort by team name, then by last name, and then by student name. So what I have is team name, then two vertical bars, also sometimes called pipe, then a single quote, a colon, a space, another single quote, then I have two more vertical bars. This is the concatenation symbol. Then I name a field, in this case student last name, two vertical bars, a single quote, a comma and a space, and then another single quote, and then another concatenation, which is the two pipes or two vertical bars. So that's how this is created. And we will click Create List of Values. I'll shrink this up a little bit. And I will go back to my application and I can run that. Go into my evaluations, click something that will get me to the master detail. Then I will edit this page and where I had implore, uh, not evaluator ID, I will double click on that. And I have some options for how to display this. I want it to be a select list. I can pick it from the drop down or I can click it here. Then I want to scroll down and I want to change the label so it no longer says ID. And then I want to go to the list of values section and pick my student list. Display null value, yes, and then add a symbol for the null value. I could go ahead and apply changes, but since I know the very next field is going to be Evaluatee, I'll go ahead and click the Next button and make my Select List change and change, get rid of the ID for the label. I will select the very same list and say Display Null Yes, and then I will apply the changes, run that, and so now I see the full name of the student as well as the team that they are on. I'm going to make one other quick edit here. I'm going to come in where to the evaluation ID field which is currently hidden and switch it to display only and make that change.
I want to do something similar down here where I have the numbers for the eval item ID. So I will go back to my application, go back to shared components, go to list of values, and create. And this will be uh, eval item list. This will be dynamic. This time, because I will only display one column, I can use the create LOV wizard. I can select my table, which is going to be uh, eval items. And then from there, my display column, I'm going to do the eval item code. And then I want the return to be the primary key, which is eval item ID. And I click Next, accept that change, and I create the list. I go back in my application. And I want to go back to my evaluation pick one of these and now I want to edit this page again. So here's the master section. I'm going to collapse that. What I need to do is expand the detail section which is actually in the form of a report. So I expand my report columns and I want to go in and modify the eval item ID. So double click on that and it has a slightly different look because we are in a report format rather than the, the form format that we were looking at before. So the way we're changing the same properties but it has a slightly different look. I want to go from text field to select list on named LOV. Select my list and that would be the eval item list. Display null, yes. Add my symbol. And when I apply changes here, it pops me out to the next level, which would be at the report level. So I just simply apply my change and run it. And now I see the actual item that they are being, this uh, evaluatee is being scored on. So if I go back to the report, I now want to replace the numbers we see here for evaluator and evaluatee. But I don't actually want it to be quite as long as what I see here with the team name, the last name, and the first name. So I'm going to go create another list. I'll go back to my application, go to shared components, under user interface, go to list of values, and I will create another list of values. So this will be uh, student names. And this will be dynamic. And I will again copy the code in. So I'm selecting the student last name field, concatenating it, putting a, a comma and a space. Those are between single quotes. Then a concatenation with two vertical bars. Then the first name field of the student. That's going to be as a display column and then I'm returning the student ID. So that's the return value is the student ID field. This is coming from students and the sort is on the first column. And I will go back to my application, run it, go back to evaluations. Now I'm at the report level. You know, and I, I would say I could go to down here and select the, the page I want to edit. Uh, but a lot of times I like to go to that particular page based on how it appears, how I get to it in the application, if I'm not sure what my names are or my page numbers are. So now I've got the report for evaluations and I will edit that. I will expand the report columns and go to evaluator ID and the column heading will be evaluator. On the display, I'm going to say display based on LOV because this isn't used for data entry, so we don't actually need a drop-down list. And then I will select my LOV, which is student names, and display null. Uh, yes, I generally I want to say yes. And then I can go ahead and click next to get to the evaluatee, get rid of the ID as the column heading, display based on LOV, 
scroll down and find my LOV. And then apply changes. Because I'm in the report, it comes back out at the report level and I apply changes again. And then I run that and I now see the names of the students in the report, which I can then click on to see the detail for any one record. I can take that same list of values I used in this report here and I can go to workshops. I can go to a particular workshop and its attendances and I can now use that same list to display students. So I'm going to click on uh, edit the page and I will want to change the detail form so I expand that and I want to go to attendance student ID which is the foreign key and here I can show student instead of student ID and this time though it might be interactive and you know we would use it in, to add new rows so I'm going to say select list on named love and scroll down and do my student names again and say yes on the display of null and apply changes, apply changes, run that and I now see the names of students that have attended this particular workshop.